All right, hello, Warhawks. So we're going to review over the Constitution era and some of the key facts here. We're just hitting the main points. We're not hitting every detail about the Constitution, um, but we're going to hit some of the main points, and these are some of the most tested points um, uh, and most likely to see something like this on the STAR test. So uh, let's get going. Uh, it is going to move kind of quick, but there's a lot of information here, and I don't want this to be too long a video. All right, so the Articles of Confederation is our first constitution. Um, it's our first government. Uh, it is a confederation government. So Articles of Confederation is kind of our first one. Um, and it created a weak federal government and strong states. That's the key here. There's only one branch of government, um, and that's the Congress. There's not an executive branch. There's not a judicial branch. Um, it leaves the power in the states. It leaves most of the governing authority and everything there to the states. And it's kind of just a loose group of states that have come together for a few things. Um, and it's so it's weak by design. It was on purpose, but it's so weak that it does cause some problems. And those weaknesses are things like they can't collect taxes. And so therefore, they, uh, they, they can't do much because everything a government does requires money. You can't do something without money. And so if they don't have money, that, that's going to be a problem. And that's a huge problem. Uh, they couldn't regulate trade. If they were going to make a change, it took a supermajority. Nine out of the 13 states had to approve that change. And so that was very difficult. And we already talked about no executive. And then finally, this, this bolded one, the state had more power than the national government. That's the key. The states had more power. Um, and those ultimately lead to problems. Uh, and that make the ultimately the Articles of Confederation um, really unworkable uh, as a as a government. The one good thing that does come out of the Northwest Ordinance, and this is often on your test, just like the last item, um, is that it, out of the Articles of Confederation is the Northwest Ordinance. Uh, and with the Northwest Ordinance, it, it provides for an orderly way to add new states. And it says these new states are going to be equal to the original 13 states. So they're not going to come in and be something less, like the original 13 are um, have most of the power and these new states have some kind of less power. No, new states will come in uh, with the same power, uh, the same standing as any other state. Uh, you could not become apply for statehood until you had at least 60,000 people. Um, and one of the significant things about the Northwest Ter Ordinance is that uh, it forbids slavery in those territories. Um, so uh, another thing that is essential to the uh, Constitution and the creation of the Constitution, um, so after the Articles of Confederation, they come together to create a, uh, have a constitutional convention, and um, they come with a plan. James Madison, the father of the Constitution, comes with a plan, and that plan is called the Virginia Plan. Uh, and his plan is a lot of what we uh, basically have today, but there were some differences. So he created three branches of government. Uh, legislative, executive, and judicial. Now, that's not his idea. He's not the first person to come up with that idea, um, but he does want it in our government, federal government as well. Uh, and in Congress, that is the legislative branch, representation would be based on population. Uh, and that would be both uh, in the House and the Senate. Well, uh, the small states don't like that because they're not, they're not going to have as much representation. So the New Jersey plan came back and said, no, we're going to have representation equal for every state. And there's only going to be one house. There's not going to be a house and a Senate. There's just going to be a one house um, and every state. And that was closer. The New Jersey plan was really closer to the articles, but with significant changes still. Uh, and then ultimately what we come up with is the Great Compromise. Uh, and the key here is that you've got the House and the Senate. So you can see the Senate chambers over here and the House of Representatives on this side. And um, the House of Representatives today is based on population. And the Senate is based on, uh, is equal. It's two for every state. Each state gets two senators. Uh, and so that kind of one side, the House of Representatives, that makes the larger states happy and says, you know, we, we have better population, so we should have more representation. The smaller states say, but we don't want to be overrun, so they have equal representation in the Senate. Uh, and that is the, the compromise that, that we came up with as a nation. Uh, and it's worked out pretty well. Uh, this is also why, because of the House of Representatives, this is why we have to have a census every 10 years to count the population and see how many representatives each state will have. 
uh, which and we which just came out yesterday. The results for the 2020 census uh, and the therefore the changing of the representation just came out yesterday. And so the state of Texas is actually adding one more member of the House of Representatives. So we will elect one more uh, member. Uh, some states are actually losing a representative because they did not grow as fast as Texas did. All right, so uh, that was the plan, but not everybody liked it. There was a whole group of people that were in favor of it. They wanted to ratify the Constitution, um, and there were people that were against it. Those that supported the Constitution and thought it was a good idea were the Federalists. Um, they wanted a more powerful government, but not too powerful. These are men like James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, Ben Franklin, George Washington certainly were uh, as well. Uh, but Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay, these men wrote the Federalist Papers that supported uh, the Constitution, the ratification of the Constitution. Uh, the Anti-Federalists were men like Patrick Henry and George Mason. They wrote an the Anti-Federalist Papers, and they believed that the Constitution created a government that was too powerful and would take away some freedom. Uh, the Anti-Federalists, uh, some of them said, you know what, I can't believe you even created this Constitution, especially without a um, Bill of Rights. And so they said, you need to add a Bill of Rights at the very least. And uh, once the Federalists agreed to add a Bill of Rights, that was what really tipped it over to where enough of the Anti-Federalists supported it, um, and it was passed, ultimately. Um, it did take, it wasn't something that just happened right away. It did take a lot of effort. Um, Rhode Island doesn't ratify it for quite some time. But um, the Bill of, adding a Bill of Rights, promising that they would add a Bill of Rights, convinces people uh, that uh, the Constitution will be workable. Uh, and so that was key, the Anti-Federalist that wanted a Bill of Rights. And so instead of being, this image kind of shows you, instead of being a bunch of just individual countries that are kind of loosely together, the Constitution passing kind of makes us one nation. All right, so it was written, the Constitution was written in 1787 and ratified. Um, in 1791, the Bill of Rights was officially ratified. So the Constitution plus the Bill of Rights, um, that means a good, that's a go, and people are in favor of it. All right, um, so the principles of the Constitution, I'm not going to get a lot, go into these a lot. You can see them in the notes. The popular sovereignty means the people have the power. Republicanism means the people vote for representatives. Limited government, the government cannot do what is not in the Constitution, so it limits the power of the government. Federalism, power is shared between the national and state government. And then we have separation of powers. Powers are separated between the three branches. So when you see a question about separation of powers, it usually has something to do with the three branches of government. Uh, checks and balances. These are, you know, these are things like the veto, where the president can, it's not the president's job to make laws. It's the legislative branch's job. It's Congress's job. But the president has a voice in it. And if he doesn't, the president, he or she doesn't like it, they can veto the law. And that is a check on the power of the legislative branch. Um, that, that's one example. It's kind of the most famous example, but there's other examples. The Senate has to confirm presidential appointments. Uh, the Senate confirms president, uh, including uh, appointments to the judicial uh, to the judicial branch, like the Supreme Court. Uh, and then finally, we've got individual rights. Basic liberties of citizens are protected by our Constitution. So those are kind of the key seven principles of the Constitution. All right, amending the Constitution. There's two different others. Uh, to amend the Constitution, you need two-thirds of the houses of Congress to vote for the change, two-thirds of both houses of Congress. So two-thirds of the people in the House of Representatives, two-thirds of the senators in Congress to call for a change. And then three-fourths of the state legislatures have to vote for that change. So that is uh, how you amend the Constitution, and the purpose of amending a Constitution is to make it a, make a change to it. That's to something that you know this this document that is ruling a nation, and has existed for over um, over 200 years. Well, in that time, there's going to be so they, they recognize the founders recognize there there may be some things that happen in the future that we haven't prepared for, and we may need to make some changes. And so, being able to make changes to the Constitution is the purpose of the amendment.
All right. Um, there are two ways to become a citizen. There's birthright citizenship. That's people that are born in the U.S. or parents are U.S. citizens. Um, and then there's naturalized citizens. And there's a process that uh, people can go through to become citizens. Uh, you live in the U.S. for five years. You must be 18 years old. Understand U.S. history and government. You have a test, basically. Uh, they give you like 100 different questions you could have. And then on the test, you, ha you get 10 of them. There's 10 of those questions that you have to answer, and you don't know which 10, so you got to study them all. Uh, and then you have to swear an allegiance to the Constitution. Bill of Rights. Uh, that's the 10 amendments, the first 10 amendments that were so essential to our uh, protections of our government. And that's, that's what I want you to remember. So the 10 amendments, you remember these hand signals? The 10 amendments, they protect our rights. The first amendment protects, it spells wraps, uh, protects the freedom of religion, assembly, petition, press, and speech. Uh, those are in different order, but you get the idea. And those are essential. Um, th those Some people say that this is the most important um, amendment, and it's the first amendment because of its importance. Uh, so second amendment. So we did the first amendment. There's four freedoms in the first amendment. Second amendment, the right to bear arms. The third amendment, make size of a quarter you make a whole the size of a quarter that's the quartering act three quartering act you don't have to quarter soldiers in your house the fourth amendment knock knock it's the police do you have a warrant you have the freedom to ha not have unreasonable search and seizure you have to have a warrant um fifth amendment the right to due process um that's the right to the fifth amendment you have the right to remain silent is the way we remember it um it's the right to due process in other words you don't um, if you're accused of a crime, they have to have evidence. They have to. There's a certain process that you are due um, that uh, they have to go to. They go through to uh, arrest somebody and to hold somebody uh, and and to try to convict somebody of a crime. You have a there, you have rights. Um, they can't just do what they want. Uh, the Sixth Amendment. You have a right to a trial by jury. It's a right to a speedy trial by jury. So the Sixth Amendment is you have the right to a trial by jury, a speedy trial by jury. Uh, Eighth Amendment is another one, uh, no cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, Ninth Amendment, citizens have more rights than just listed in the Constitution. And then the Tenth Amendment, rights not given to the federal government are reserved for the states. Now, one of the things about our Constitution is we had a lot of complaints about our government under the under Great Britain, under our previous government, under our previous nation. And so these are listed here. We King imposed taxes without consent. King made judges dependent on his will. King refused colonists to petition. King quartered troops. King deprived colonists the right to trial by jury. Well, they addressed these grievances in the Constitution. Uh, so taxes must be approved by Congress. Judges are appointed for lifetime. In other words, uh, not dependent on the will of the, the president. The president can't get rid of you once you're in, um, if he, he doesn't like what you're doing. First Amendment provides rights to petition. Third Amendment provides rights not to quarter soldiers. And the Sixth Amendment provides rights to a trial by jury to everyone. All right, so just to be clear, uh, the Declaration of Independence, one of the key things it does is um, kind of point out the problems that we had under Great Britain. And then our Constitution and Bill of Rights is this, has a lot of the solutions to those problems that we felt like existed under our previous government. So that's a very quick overview of the Constitution, some of the key things uh, over the Constitution that you need to know.